Good morning. Welcome. We sing with us. Come, thou fount of every blessing, tune my heart to sing thy grace. Streams of mercy never ceasing, call for songs of loudest praise. Teach me some melodious sonnet, sung by flaming tongues above. Praise the mount I'm fixed upon it, mount of thy redeeming love. Amen. Here I raise my Ebenezer. Hither by thy help I've come, and I hope by thy good pleasure safely to arrive at home. Jesus sought me when a stranger, wandering from the fold of God, he to rescue me from danger. Interpose his precious blood. Oh, to grace, how great a debtor daily I'm constrained to be. Let thy goodness, like a fetter, bind my wandering heart to thee. Prone to wander, Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the God I love. Here's my heart, Lord, take and seal it. Seal it for thy courts above. Prone to wander, Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the God I love. Here's my heart, Lord, take and seal it. Amen. Let's continue singing this morning. When death was arrested and my life began. Amen. Alone in my sorrow and dead in my sin Lost without hope with no place to begin Your love made a way to let mercy come in When death was arrested and my life began Ash was redeemed, only beauty remained my orphaned heart was given a name. My morning grew quiet, my feet rose to dance. When death was arrested and my life began. Oh, your grace so free washes over me. You have made be new now life begins with you it's your endless love pouring down on us you have made me new now life begins with you From my chains, I'm a prisoner no more. My shame was a ransom he faithfully bore. He canceled my debt and he called me his friend. When death was arrested and my life began, oh, your grace so washes over me you have made me new now life begins with you it's your endless love pouring down on us you have 
rejoiced as though heaven had lost but then Jesus arose with our freedom in hell that's when death was arrested and my life began oh your grace so free washes over Then my life began Oh, we're free, free forever We're free, come join the soul of all the redeemed Yes, we're free, free forever, amen When death was arrested and my life began When death was arrested and my life began Well, good morning and welcome to Heritage. We are so glad to see you guys. We regret that we can't be in person, but we're glad you guys are at home staying safe. So thanks for tuning in and watching. If you are a visitor, we would love it if you would leave a comment and just let us know that you're joining us online today. That way we can reach out and say hello and connect with you. Because of inclement weather, be sure to be watching our Facebook page. That'll be the first place we let you know if we decide to cancel or rearrange anything on our schedule. So be sure to stay watching for that. When we do get back in person, be sure to come to our Sunday school classes. No matter how old you are, what stage of life you're in, there's a group for you or your kids. Additionally, we have a new visitors and members class and a baptism class that we're going to be starting. So if you want more information on those, feel free to sign up in person on the sign in sheets or comment and we'll get you signed up for that as well. So those are at 10 a.m. on Sundays. Because of the inclement weather, there will not be Bible study for the ladies this week. So this Thursday, stay home, stay safe, stay dry, and we'll hopefully resume next week. Lastly, we're starting to discuss Vacation Bible School. So we just want you to be aware of those dates so you can mark them down and get ready to come, get ready to volunteer, bring your kids. That will be June 27th to July 1st. Thanks so much for joining us. We're glad to see you. Sing Jesus Messiah together. He's the name above all names. He's Emmanuel. Let's praise him this morning. He became sin who knew no sin that we might become his righteousness. He humbled himself carried the cross love so amazing love so amazing Jesus Messiah the name above all names blessed
Jesus Messiah, Lord of all. His body, the bread, His blood, the wine, broken and poured, all for love. The whole earth trembled and the veil was torn. Love so amazing. Love so amazing. Jesus Messiah. Name above all names. Blessed Jesus Messiah, Lord of all, and all our hope is in you, all our hope is in you, all the glory. Messiah, the name above all names, blessed Redeemer, Emmanuel, the rescue for sinners, the ransom from hell. Jesus Messiah, Lord of all. Jesus Messiah, Lord of all. Let's pray. Lord, we just thank you so much for this day. Thank you so much for this time that you've given us. We thank you so much for the change of seasons. And let us know that you are faithful. And you are in control and you are who you say you are. Lord, we pray that you bless this time. So we hear the preaching of God's word. And in your name we pray. Amen. Well, good morning, and I do pray that uh, this service has been a blessing to you already with the worship, and I pray that the preaching of the Word will also minister to your souls, and Lord willing, next week we'll be able to gather together face-to-face -face and encourage each other. Uh, the title for the message today is The Church, and we are taking a break from John, uh, John's Gospel, and instead we're going to be in Ephesians chapter 4. So let me pray, and then I will dive into the message. Lord God, thank you so much for ministering to your people, even through uh, this means, even though we're not able to gather together and see one another and encourage one another. God, we pray that you would bless the church this Lord's Day uh, as they worshiped in their homes and heard from you in their homes, and God, that it will fuel them uh, for walking worthy uh, of your calling this Lord, this week. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So, uh, there's multiple reasons that I chose to go to Ephesians chapter 4. One of them was a uh, headlines that just keeps coming up. This prominent Christian author, speaker, uh, that has, in his, after his death, uh, reality has come to light that he was living a very duplicitous life that uh, what he conveyed himself in public was very different than uh, what he was in private and 
This is uh, a tragedy. This does harm to the gospel of Christ. It does harm to uh, the church of Christ and the, the glory of Christ among the nations has been tarnished um, because of this uh, man's behavior. And uh, in Ephesians chapter 4, uh, we have some very uh, strong encouragement from the Word of God that uh, would root out in us that kind of duplicity and strengthen us to instead uh, walk in a way that is worthy of the call of Christ. And so I want to walk through the entirety of chapter 4 with you. And so let's dive in. The church, the first point is called to walk worthy. Look with me at verse 1 through 6. I therefore, a prisoner of the Lord, urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you have been called. Uh, the body of Christ, this is to the church, this is the elders the, at Ephesus would have received this letter. Uh, this word for called is used multiple times. We have been called to come to Christ, to follow after him. But this calling also has within it to follow me, deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow me. We've been called to walk in a manner that's worthy of that calling of having been called to come to Christ. And notice immediately that affects how we interact with one another within the body of Christ. Verse 2 and 3. With all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, eager to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. We're called to walk in humility, gentleness, patience, bearing with one another in love. And we are to be eager to keep the unity with which Christ has brought us together in peace in the church. And let's be honest, it's not easy um, with other believers always to be at peace, always to be patient and gentle, uh, to bear with one another. But this is the call of the gospel of Christ. Yes, Christ called us to himself, and so we, we do have a relationship with Jesus Christ, but in that calling, he's also united us to be one body of Christ. And so we've been brought together in that call to be united with brothers and sisters in the Lord Jesus. God knew that there would be things that, would, that the enemy could use, that our flesh could be stirred up, that would divide us and separate us from one another. There's the non-essentials of the faith that often are used by the enemy to press us away from one another. Now, there's also the essentials of the faith, and the essentials of the faith is what we should be united around. In, in fact, Romans 14, uh, Paul points that out to the, the Christians in Rome. Uh, there were those that were not celebrating Old Testament uh, ceremonial days. They were uh, eating certain foods. They were drinking certain drinks. And it came into conflict amongst the Romans with those who felt obligated uh, to celebrate certain holy days, to not eat certain foods and not drink certain drinks. And those non-essentials uh, in doctrine, in practice, are still driving Christians apart. But let's be clear. If there is an essential of the doctrine uh, of uh, the person of Christ and uh, that it's by faith alone, through grace alone, in Christ alone that we are saved or someone denies the deity, deity of Christ, then we are to be divided by those things, but not non-essentials. And we're, instead, we're called to walk worthy of our calling with one another in such a way that it requires us to be humble and gentle and bearing with one another, that we stand firmly united uh, with one another in Christ. Verse 4 and 5, there is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to the one hope that belongs to your call. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, and one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all, and in all. This passage gives us the reason why that we're united and why we ought to remain uh, connected with one another, that there ought to be unity amongst the body of Christ. 
We are one body. We've been united by one spirit, been united in Christ, been united to the one God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. We've been united in the grace of salvation. And here, what do we have highlighted here? The argument is we have a trinity of reasons, the Spirit, the Son, and the Father uh, that has united us together, that we ought to be able to dwell with one another in a way that is worthy of the call of the gospel. So let's be honest. What divisions are there amongst us here at Heritage? Well, we might not all agree on, on public school versus homeschooling. We might not all agree on wearing masks and not wearing masks. We might not agree on what we drink and what we should not drink. We have various views on end times here. We all agree, yes, the Lord Jesus Christ is coming back, but the order in which everything comes out, there is not agreement on that. And rather then those things driving us far apart from one another. We're to, uh, we're to recognize, hey, there are differences among us, but those are not differences that are essential to our faith. We all agree that Christ is our Lord, that the Spirit uh, has brought new birth, and that there is faith in Christ alone that has redeemed us, has united us to our God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Um, I built a table for our family. We have nine people in our family and a table big enough like that. It was cheaper for me to build it than to buy it. And so uh, one of the things I noticed is when I was putting screws in, trying to connect wood to wood, is that uh, initially that screw would drive the wood apart and then I have to pull it back out and then put the screw back in and then it would cinch the wood tightly up one against another. And listen, these non-essentials of the faith can be used in such a way that, that they drive us away from one another, that we see things in Scripture, non-essentials in Scripture differently, and the, the enemy and our flesh can be used in such a way that we allow that to to distance us from each other. And the reality is, instead, since we're called to dwell in unity with one another in Christ around the essentials, those non-essentials can actually be used to drive us to be cinched up closer to one another, to be more closely united. Here's how. If we handle those non-essentials in a loving, gracious and humble way when we sit down and we discuss and we have disagreement we recognize you know what brother uh, we might not see this in agreement and we might not agree on on this particular issue but we agree that christ came and died for sinners like us and has saved us and has made us a brother or sister in christ to one another and i'm so thankful that our unity is around jesus um, and and not around a mask or not wearing a mask. We can handle these things in a way that rather that, that the enemy would want to push a wedge between us, we can handle them in a gracious, loving way that instead we have more love and affection for one another just because of how we handle that conversation. And that is God's intent. So we've been called to walk worthy by being united to one another around Christ. But we've also been empowered to walk worthy. Look at verse 7 and 8 with me. But grace was given to each one of us according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore it says, when he ascended on high, he led a host of captives and he gave gifts to men. Now look at verse 11. And he gave the apostles, the prophets, evangelists, the shepherds, and the teachers. So the grace spoken of here is not the grace of salvation, but rather the grace of having been given a, a, a fruit of the Spirit, a gift of the Spirit that we can walk in and use amongst the body of Christ to serve the body of Christ with that unique gift. Uh, so the one who died and rose again, the one who reigns in the heavens has given the church spiritual gifts. And verse 11 tells us that some of those gifts that he gave are the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, pastors or shepherds and teachers. Um, here we see the gifting of those that are listed here are primarily called to minister the word of God amongst the body. Um, then look at verse 12. 
to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ. So God created the church. Christ died for the church to redeem the church, to call the church to himself. And then he empowers the church with the gifts of the spirit so that those that are gifted with with teaching uh, the word of God, that they would equip the body of Christ uh, for the work of ministry so that the whole body is working and ministering together with the gifts which, with which the Spirit has given the body. And what is the end result? It's that Christ, that the body of Christ is edified, built up, and strengthened. 1 Corinthians 12, 7 says this, To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. Verse 13 of Ephesians 4 again, Until we all attain to the unity of the faith, and of the knowledge of the Son of God to mature manhood, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. So verse 13 gives us the end goal in this. And that result, the end result that God is after is that we would be united in faith in the knowledge of the Son of God. To be a perfect or a mature man in Christ, a mature body of believers in Christ, to the fullness of Christ. So that's the function of the why we spend so much time in the word of God so that we wouldn't be united around a a, a mere man who stands up and preaches, but rather that we would be united uh, through the teaching of the, the word of God that takes place in multiple places in the church. But it's uniting us ultimately in the one word of God, in the one Lord Jesus Christ. And what is the end result of that is that the body, the entire body, is built up into a mature church, a mature body of Christ. You've heard the saying, likely, uh, doctrine divines. But that is not true. God did not give doctrine, that is teaching of the word, to divide the body of Christ. Rather, God gave it that the body of Christ would be equipped to minister and unite around the word of God that ultimately points us to Jesus Christ, that we would be united around Jesus himself. So God calls us to walk in a manner worthy as the body of Christ, but then he empowers each and every person in the body of Christ to walk worthy. He calls us and empowers us to that which he calls. Verse 14 and 15. So that, here's another result, the result of the body being built up in the word, so that we may no longer be children tossed to and fro by the waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by human cunning, by craftiness and deceitful schemes. Rather, speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in every way into him who is the head. Uh, the, The growing up to become a mature body of Christ in the word of Christ is the result of that is that whenever false doctrine and lies come our way, we're able to discern those and recognize, look, this is not accurate teaching of the word of God. I'm not going to buy into that. One of the things that this prominent Christian leader said and told himself and told uh, the, the women that he was mistreating, treating as, as objects for his pleasure. One of the things he told them is that, that they were gifts of God to him for giving his life over to the ministry of God. What a, what a horrible lie from the pit of hell. And what should have been done with that by him as well as uh, the women that, that he was mistreating is, wait a minute, God, God would not do that. God would not call, call you to sin and be committing a, adulterous, having adulterous relationships with multiple other women. No, that is not a gift of God. And that is the, the body of Christ is to be strong, strengthened in deep roots in the word of God so that when lies come our way, from the pit of hell, we recognize where they come from. And instead, we listen to the voice of our shepherd and we follow him. Verse 16, from whom the whole body joined and held together by every joint with which it is equipped, when each part is working properly, makes the body grow so that it builds itself up in love. 
what a beautiful purpose that God has for the body of Christ. That he would not just use one man, one woman, uh, but instead God uses every man and woman in the body of Christ for the building up. When each part is doing the unique part that God has given each part of it, each person, they're built up. And they strengthen themselves in unity and in love for God and in love for one another. Oh, you are important believer to this body of Christ. We, we can't do without the eye. We can't do without the ear. We can't do without the hand. We can't do without the foot. We need each and every person in the body of Christ because God has uniquely gifted you, empowered you to serve here at heritage. So what is your part in the body of Christ? And obviously this, this work, this role that God has for you in the body of Christ is going to relate directly to the, the spiritual gift that God has equipped you with. Each joint, each member doing its part necessary for the strengthening of the body of Christ. You might be saying, Chris, I don't know what my spiritual gift is. And I would encourage you to read Romans 12, 1 Corinthians 12, and be praying to God about that. Be consulting with other believers. Hey, what, what have you witnessed in me? What, what, uh, what gifts do you think that the God has perhaps equipped me with? And um, I have resources that I can get in your hands that uh, won't tell you exactly what your gift is, but will point you in the direction of God's word so that you can be examining yourself and seeing, God, how do you want me to serve? What gift have you given me? And what does that look like at Heritage, how I'm to serve and build up the body of Christ for this very purpose? 1 Peter 4, 10 through 11 says, As each has received a gift, use it to serve one another as good stewards of God's varied grace. So the varied grace there is talking about all the varied gifts. Verse 11, Whoever speaks as one who speaks oracles of God. Whoever serves as one who serves by the strength that God supplies. In order that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. To him belong glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. John Owen said, Without spiritual gifts and their exercise, there can be no authentic church life. Gifts of the Spirit are that without which the church cannot subsist in this world. Nor can believers be useful to one another and the rest of mankind under the glory of Christ as they ought to be. If you are a believer in Christ, you have been given a spiritual gift that is uh, God has uniquely given you, equipped you with to build up the body of Christ, to draw the body of Christ closer together, that we're loving God more, that we're loving one another more, but also so that we are glorifying God all the more as the body of Christ. Third and finally, we've been renewed to walk worthy. Um, before we get into how we've been renewed and called to walk in this newness of life, um, it first reminds us what our old life was like in verse 17 through 19. Now this I say and testify in the Lord that you must no longer walk as the Gentiles do and the futility of their minds. They are darkened in their understanding and alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them due to their hardness of heart. They have become callous and have given themselves to sensuality, greedy to practice every kind of impurity. I think, church, sometimes we forget where we were when God found us. But here we've got a reminder of how our old pattern of life and how the, the world still walks. And we are not to walk like that. We are not to live like that. Our lives have been set apart from sin. And instead, we've been called to holiness. Listen, there will continue to be church leader after church leader. And it comes finds out that they are living a, a, a duplicitous life and that should not shake your faith because ultimately we do not look to man we look to God we look to Christ he is the perfect one we were the sinners we are sinners and by the grace of God he's called us to himself and listen there will be failure amongst the body of Christ 
And God has given us his word on how we ought to handle those situations. And we can trust God's word when there is sin found amongst the body to follow it because he knows how to care for his bride better than any of us could fathom. But this passage, this passage is an encouragement to those that are struggling with sin in their life and then they know that they ought not to be living a, a duplicitous life. That we're no longer to walk in these sinful ways. We're no longer to be like the world, to think like them, act like them, feel like them, or walk as the world walks. Instead, Christian, you and I have been called, empowered, but God has also done a work of renewal within us so that we can walk worthy of the calling of the Lord Jesus Christ. Look at verse 20 through 22. But that is not the way you learned Christ. Assuming that you've heard about him or were taught in him as the truth is in Jesus, to put off your old self, which belongs to the former manner of life and is corrupt through deceitful desires. You have been called apart from that life. You've been called out of darkness to, into the marvelous light of Christ. And now uh, you've been indwelt by the Spirit of God, gifted by the Spirit of God. Now you've been empowered by the Spirit of God to no longer walk in the patterns of this world, but instead to walk in a way that is fully pleasing to Christ. Look, several ways in which we've been renewed is now discussed. Verse 23, we've uh, are to have a renewed mind and to be renewed in the spirit of your minds and to put on the new self created after the likeness of God in true righteousness and holiness. We are to put on the new self. The previous verse said that we're to put off the old self. And literally the word there for putting off and putting on is what you will do with a garment. And over these past couple days, it's been really cold. You've likely put a coat on as you've gone outside. And as you've come back inside, you've taken that coat off. And listen, our old man, the old person that we were when God found us, when we died to self, we are to keep that old self off, the old pattern of life, pursuing those sins. We're to keep that person off, but instead we're supposed to put on the new man, the new woman that's been created new in Christ Jesus. And I encourage you to look at Ephesians 2.10 and there you'll see that this new man, this new woman was created by God himself. And so we are to walk no longer in the lusts of our former self, but instead to walk in the holiness of the new creation that we've been made in Christ. Not only are we to have a renewed mind that translates us into walking in a way that pleases God, uh, one of the ways that we are to uh, renew ourselves is a renewed speech. Verse 25, Therefore, having put away falsehood, let each one of you speak the truth with his neighbor. For we are members one of another. And the world that doesn't even recognize truth with a capital T, you and I are to always speak the truth. The context of this passage has to do with speaking truth to fellow believers in Christ. Oh, if this leader would have spoken the truth about what was going on in his life. And I, I pray that, that we have someone in our life that, that will hold us accountable, that will ask us, how are you doing, brother? How are you doing, sister? And that we don't just put on a mask and say, I'm fine. When the reality is, is no, you might be struggling. You might be struggling in your walk with Christ. You might be struggling with temptation. You might have slipped. You might have fallen into sin, given yourself over to sin, and you're, 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 you feel so guilty about it that you won't tell anyone about it. But that's just keeping you trapped in it. Instead, um, the, the Bible tells us that, that we can confess our sins to one another, that we might be healed and Listen, sharing with a, a faithful brother or sister in Christ, or if, listen, if you are a son or a daughter living with your parents still, or even older and have moved out, your parents who are in Christ love you. Pick up the phone, give them a call, meet with them and say, Mom and Dad, I'm struggling with this. Please pray for me. Reach out to one another. The body of Christ is there to serve and minister to you. And uh, listen, your elders are, uh, have 
each one of the elders and pastors have been aside different members in this body of Christ. And, and we're going to be praying specifically for certain families uh, for uh, a given time, for a quarter of the year. And we're going to be reaching out to you and connecting with you and saying, how can we serve you? How can we pray for you? And should the Lord lead you, say, hey, look, I'm struggling with this. We're not going to look down on you because we know our own flesh. We want to serve and minister to you in any way that we can. But you might be closer to someone else in, in this body. And we encourage you, reach out to them. Um, become accountable with somebody and share with somebody so that you're not the next uh, uh, news article. You're not the next one that is, oh yeah, they were a Christian at Heritage, but now look, look what's become of them. Oh, the body of Christ is there for one another, to minister to one another, to recognize, look, we're not better than anyone. We, we're there to build one another, to pray for one another, and strengthen one another. We're also to have renewed self-control. Um, uh, uh, our emotions are not to control us, and neither is the devil. Look at verse 26 and 27. Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger, and give no opportunity for to the devil and self-control is a fruit of the spirit and listen uh, there are plenty of things in this world that can stir us to anger but in our anger we're not to lash out uh, at our brother and sister in christ we're not to treat one another with malice we're not to 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 in that anger behave in sinful ways and in, in thought um, in, in speech or in action toward one another. Instead, um, rather than giving the devil an opportunity to stir up strife among the body, um, we're in, in, when someone angers us, when someone says something and they weren't thinking well about their words, and, and that could harm, you know, harm the relationship between one another, the mature brother and sister in Christ is able to say, I love them. I, I, love covers a multitude of sins here. Um, and, and maybe it gets to the place where you have to say, hey, what you said hurt my heart. I, I'm sure you didn't mean it that way, but I just want you to know that that, that hurt me. But I love you, but I just want to be honest with you. Um, it's time that, that we're willing, rather than acting in anger and then gossiping about someone who said something to us, we go to that person directly, love them, and say, I, I, I love you still, but I just want you to know what you said hurt, what you did hurt, so that we can be right with one another and continue in unity. Uh, not only are we to have renewed self-control, but also a renewed use of our hands. Look at verse 28. Let the thief no longer steal, but rather let him labor, doing honest work with his own hands, so that he may have something to share with anyone in need. So rather than stealing from one another and, and expecting others to always provide for us, there might be a time or two in our life that we need help from one another financially and, and otherwise. But, but the standard for the believer isn't to be looking to others to provide for oneself, but that we are working diligently with our own hands so that God may bless and in an abundance that we can bless others. So rather than looking for others to provide for us, we're looking ways that we can be a blessing to others, to work with with our hands so that we can minister to uh, the needs of others. Not only renewed use of hands, but also a renewed purpose of life. We are to live for the good of the church and the glory of God rather than harming one another and grieving God through harmful speech for one another. Verse 29 through 31. Let no corrupt talk come out of your mouths, but only such as is good for building up as fits the occasion, that it may give grace to those who hear and do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you along with all malice. So here, this renewed purpose in life is to live in loving one another and to the glory of God. Whereas before, when we were living like this world, we didn't care about others like we ought to, and nor did we honor God, but we grieved him in how we treated other people. God has renewed you, renewed the purpose for which he has brought you in life in Christ so that you can live to love and serve one another and for the glory of God. Also, finally, renewed hearts. We have been given a heart that forgives and loves like Christ, who forgave us and loves us. 
This is Ephesians 4, 32 through 5, verse 2, and we'll end with this. Be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ forgave you. Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children and walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. This new heart that we have been given is modeled after the heart of our Savior, who loves and forgave us in spite of us. And Christ is our example of what it looks like to walk in love. He loved us so much that he died for us. And God received his act of love as a sweet-smelling sacrifice, an offering to himself. So rather than walking in, in bitterness and anger and clamor, we are to walk in love and treat one another in the love of Christ. Perhaps God had this message for you today, and there is someone in this body whom you've wronged, or they have wronged you. I encourage you to pray to God and in love. If it's, a, if it's something that just cannot be let go but needs to be addressed, that, that you reach out in love to that person and let them know. Um, it, it, whether you're the offender or offendee. And, and listen, if you're the one that is receiving that call, be ready to receive that call or that conversation with that brother or sister. And, and consider and evaluate, hey, what part did I play in this? Uh, am I the one that needs to forgive or am I the one that needs to receive a rebuke from my brother or sister and forgive and, and ask them to forgive me? Do this for the unity of the body of Christ and for the glory of God at Heritage Baptist Church. Uh, I referenced this verse earlier and read it to you now, James 5, 16. Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The prayer of the righteous person has great power in its working church, Heritage Baptist Church. The church has been called to walk worthy, has been empowered to walk worthy, and has been renewed to walk worthy of the calling of Christ. And then listen. We all fall short of the glory of God. And that's why ultimately we don't look to one another to be perfect. We look to Christ who is perfect and has been our, is our perfect substitute for our sin. And so listen, if you are wrapped up in sin that you see a, perhaps a duplicitous life and you're heavy over it now, I encourage you. Flee to Christ who is able to forgive you. Read First John uh, Chapter 1, uh, verse 8 and 9. And let that, that passage encourage you that God is faithful and just to forgive and to cleanse you. And, and listen, there uh, might be something that's so heavy upon you that you need someone else to talk to. And uh, your elders are here for you. Your uh, sisters and brothers in Christ are here for you. We want to minister to you rather than the devil having a foothold in your life like we're seeing in the news. We want to see you walk in Christ's victory. And that is there for you, believer, because you have been called a walk worthy. You've been empowered by the Spirit of God to walk worthy. And he's given you a new mind, a new heart that desires to walk worthy. Let's pray. Father God, minister to your body, even over the internet today, as only you can. And God, we want to see Heritage Baptist Church uh, being uh, continue to be a place uh, where we uh, are thankful for the work that you have done in saving us. Uh, we recognize the spirit that you've given us and the gifts that we've been equipped with so that we can serve this body and glorify God all the more as we mature in Christ. Oh God, may we, uh, by your spirit, put to death the deeds of the flesh and instead choose to walk by the spirit. And we pray this for the furthering of your name in the furthering of your kingdom here, even in Gravit. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Now, uh, as we close in song, I encourage you, respond as God has spoken to you through his word. Uh, even reach out, even now, if you need to.
if God is uh, encouraging you to do so. What can take a dying man, raise him up to life again? What can till a wounded soul? What can make us white as snow? What can fill the emptiness? What can mend our brokenness? The brokenness. The mighty, awesome, wonderful is the Holy Cross. faith in God, what reveals the Father's love, what can lead the wayward home, what can melt the heart of stone, what can free the guilty ones, what can save and overcome, overcome, mighty, awesome one. Wonderful is the Holy Cross. Where the Lamb laid down His life to lift us from the fall. In mighty, awesome, So Heritage Baptist Church, we look forward to joining with you uh, next Lord's Day, back gathering together face to face. And so hope to see you then. Have a blessed Lord's Day.